Hi everybody, this is uh, the lesson for Biomed's Freshman Foundation's Digital Day on January 27th. Uh, this is the first one we've tried, so um, just, just uh, be cool if things don't go well. We're going to figure this out as we go along. We're going to cover a section today. We're, we're not going to, we're not going to waste the day. So uh, realize, please, that we are skipping section 5-7 in our numbering sequence. So you're not missing anything. If you think you missed 5-7, we're going to, from the 5-6 that we covered last week to 5-8 today. And 5-8 is all about graphing absolute value functions. This is the last section in this unit. So assuming we're going to have uh, another cold day on Wednesday, I don't know, we'll, we'll figure out, I'm going to figure out how to handle that later this afternoon. But, but for now, we're going to do the last section in the Unit 5 uh, material. Be aware that this recording method I'm using has a maximum limit, time limit is 15 minutes. So if I hit the limit, then um, there will be a, a Part 2 video, and you are required to watch both videos. So just having watched one video doesn't get you off the hook. Um, the the, the check-in that you're going to receive, you're going to receive instructions from me later on in the video, and that will be towards the end. So if there's a second video, you need to watch both videos. So graphing absolute value functions, what does that look like? I believe we've kind of touched on it in the past, but we're going to talk about it a little more deeply today. I think we talked about the concept of a parent function. This would be the parent function for absolute value functions. All absolute value functions are in some way based on, uh, I'm sorry, the graph of all absolute value functions is in some way based on the graph of this function. We've talked about transformations, I believe. If we haven't, I'm going to be covering it here today, so don't get panicky. Let's think just for a quick minute what this graph is going to look like. Let's make us uh, a little chart and plot some points. Um, let's stick with my favorites, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's see what this looks like. When we plug negative 2 into the function, our output is a positive 2, because remember the absolute value drops any negatives after you've done all the simplifying inside the absolute value. You do not go dropping negatives. Um, we'll deal with that later, but but understand you have to do all the algebra you need to do inside the absolute value bars first, and then you drop any negative. If we pop in a negative 2 for x, we're going to get a positive 1. 0 is going to give us 0, 1 is going to give us 1, and 2 is going to give us 2. So if we go over here and chart that, that's going to look like this. Negative 2 is 2, negative 1 is 1, 0 is 0. 1 is 1 and 2 is 2. And the absolute value function always takes on this V shape. Sometimes it's diff in different locations, sometimes it's moved, switched around, but it's always going to have a V shape to it. Um, and so when I say that, that this is the parent function, I mean I could, I could make, and we're not going to graph this right now, but if I took the absolute value function and made it something big and ugly, it's not big and ugly, it gets way more ugly, but we've still got these absolute value bars in there, so you know the graph for this function is in some way going to have a V-shape to it. Um, let's see. Now we're going to talk about, um, we won't jump to this one right away, but we're going to start to talk about how to interpret some changes like that. Um, translations. A translation of a graph is a shift of the graph, either up or down. Whoops, not up or up. That would be silly up or down, and or left and right. So the beauty of what we're about to talk about is that when you're graphing absolute value functions, you don't have to plot points. We can use the information on translating that we can derive from looking at the function and just graph it. So let's, but first let's plot a points, some points and see what happens. 
Let's consider the function or the equation y equals absolute value of x minus 2. I'm going to rewrite that because I don't like the way it ended up there. Absolute value of x minus 2, where the minus 2 is outside of the absolute value bars. So let's think about what this is going to look like. If we plug in our usual suspects here, well, we plug in a negative 2. Let's just see what this looks like. The absolute value of negative 2 minus 2 equals, well, the negative 2 becomes a positive 2, minus 2 becomes 0. Absolute value of negative 1 minus 2 becomes a 1 minus 2, because the negative 1 drops its 1, which becomes a negative 1. The absolute value of 0 minus 2, well, absolute value of 0 is 0, minus 2 becomes a negative 2. Absolute value of 1 minus 2 is still 1 minus 2, which equals a negative 1. And the absolute value of 2 minus 2 equals a 2 minus 2, which equals 0. So let's go over here and plot it. So let's see, we're still going to need our negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 bars here on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, it looks like we're going to be going down there. So let's plot these points. On the x-axis, we have a negative 2, and the y-value is 0. So that point is right there. Negative 1 on the x-axis goes to a negative 1 on the y-axis. 0 goes to a negative 2. 1 goes to a negative 1 and 2 goes to 0. So if we connect our points, it looks like what our v did. Um, now I'm going to put over here, I'm going to put, uh, let's see, I'm going to remind us what we graphed on the last page. Um, the parent function, y equals absolute value of x, in case you've forgotten, looked like this. It looked exactly the same as what we've got now, except its vertex, which is what we call this point here, was on the origin. And now our vertex has dropped down two points. And look at that. That's kind of descriptive of a drop of two points, isn't it? Um, algebraically, you can kind of think about this as uh, we're taking this parent function, absolute value of x, and the output, y, is going to be this that parent function, but dropped down by 2. So algebraically, it might make some sense to you also that what this negative 2 here, minus 2 at the end here, is going to do is actually take every output and drop it down by 2. Well, on the graph, that's the equivalent of going 2 down on the y-axis. So it, it, in, in kind of every different way we might think about it, I hope this graph kind of makes sense for graphing this equation here. Let's do one more. Let me get a new page here. Hold on. So one thing you're going to have to have to learn to memorize, and I don't think it's a big deal, is that the parent function of the absolute value graph well, that didn't work out at all with this um, podium that I'm using, did it? Uh, the parent function of the absolute value graph is a v, there, that's much better, with its vertex on the origin and opening upwards. That's also an important fact. So this right here is something that you need to memorize and get used to. Let's think about what the graph of um, y equals absolute value of x plus 1 might look like. And I forgot my closing absolute value bar there. Once again, I think things are looking confusing, so let's rewrite. y equals the absolute value of x plus 1. Well, hopefully you're imagining right away that what we're going to have is perhaps that same V shape, but this plus 1 here, maybe that's going to move us up 1, huh?
Does that make some sense? Let's the, the minus 2 moved us down by 2. Maybe the plus 1 is going to move us up by 1. Let's real quick make a little chart and double check and make sure we're right. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, if we plug a negative 2 in, the absolute value of a negative 2 is going to give us uh, 2 plus 1, which is going to equal 3. The absolute value of 1 plus 1 is going to give us 2. The absolute value of 0 plus 1 is going to give us 1. 1 plus 1 is going to give us 2. And 2 plus 1 is going to give us 3. So if we go back over here, let's see if that gives us what we expected. And we've got the point negative 2, 3, which is, you know, right in this neighborhood. If it's, you know, it's, oh, wait a minute, the 3 would have been here, 1, 2, 3. So that would be about here. So that's about what I expected, actually. That's pretty good. Negative 1, 2 is going to be about here. 0, 1 is going to be here. 1, 2 is going to be here. And 2, 3 is going to be here. So, so just using what we're thinking we know about the translation worked. It gave us the graph we were hoping. So now let me give you a little statement that we can use. If we have a graph y equals the absolute value of x plus k, well we take the abs we take um, the graph of y equals absolute value of x and translate all right, let's just fix it. Translate by k units up or down. OK, so that's good. I would like to back up for a minute and talk about, ooh, I just uh, don't know what I just did. Um, I'd like to go back for a minute and look. Let's go back to this graph here. I'd like to talk about the domain and range of this graph. Remember, domains are inputs. Ranges are outputs. Domain, let's do this. Domain equals input, which equals the x values. Range equals output, which equals our y values. So let's think for a minute what the domain and range of an absolute value function might be. The domain, well, it looks like this is going to go on forever up and to the right, and this is going to go up forever left and to the right, or left and up, I'm sorry, right and up and left and up. So it looks like for every potential input, there is some output. So we're going to say in this case, our domain equals all real numbers. Now our outputs, uh, I'm sorry, the podium gets real weird here in this corner, so I can't finish the word numbers. I don't know. Uh, it just doesn't work in that corner. Uh, I'm just going to erase the whole thing. So our domain, in this case, <laughs> Sorry, I'm all, uh, all messed up now. In this situation, our domain equals all real numbers. Sorry, I'm, I'm starting to rush because I'm running out of my 15 minutes here. Our range, though, well, our range, our range is our outputs. And I, I look at the graph here. What possible outputs on the y-axis can we have? Well, it looks like we can go up positively. We can go up to infinity because these arrows here are going to go up forever. But it also looks like this here is as low as we can get. There's no way we're going to get an output less than uh, negative 2. So our range in this case equals uh, well, you know what? I don't like to say range equals here because now I'm going to put an equation. Our range is y is greater than or equal to negative 2. In this situation, that would be our range. So it's uh, real helpful to look at your graph and figure out what your range is going to be. Uh, I've got about 15 seconds here, so I'm going to close down and I'm going to tell you to make sure that you find part 2 of this lesson.